So today, we're here to talk about systemic lupus erythematosus. And excuse me for my terrible handwriting. Uh, the two topics, you know, broadly under systemic lupus erythematosus, or SLE, I'll call it that because it's a lot easier, that I'll be covering are first pathogenesis, and second, um, pathophysiology. And then, kind of broadly under these two categories um, of pathogenesis first, are genetic factors, um, factors related to being female, and um, environmental factors. Um, as, far as, path as far as pathophysiology, I'll be talking about um, the inappropriate immune response, associated with um, SLE, and second, the tissue damage that results from that response. So first, the inappropriate immune response. Um, so lupus could kind of be broken down into uh, three main processes that are going on. First is activation of um, adaptive immunity. Uh, second is activation of innate immunity, which are obviously tied, but they're also separate for reasons that I'll cover. And then last, ineffective clearance of immune complexes, which I'll also talk about. It's easy to think about these in kind of the linear fashion, but in reality, they're all happening independently and in kind of interesting ways. So not just linearly, but, you know, they could also be coming in this direction or any kind of crazy combination that you can think of. Um, and then first I'll be talking about, just for the sake of this LO, um, adaptive immunity, second, innate immunity, and then third, ineffective clearance of um, immune complexes. So first, adaptive immunity. So, as we talked about in class already, SLE is associated with antibodies that target your DNA. So you start out with a cell here, you know, it's got a little nucleus and so forth, and for whatever reason, uh, this cell starts to undergo apoptosis. And during apoptosis, you get something called blebs, which are these bubbles on the surface of the plasma membrane. And then from those blebs, you're going to get leakages of things like DNA and RNA. And as those things leak into the extracellular space, they're going to be picked up by, let's get some colors in here, by um, dendritic cells, these guys, or other cells of, you know, the immune system, including uh, B cells. And these are, you know, things that we've talked about in other LOs in this case. Uh, well, let me just label these real quick. So this is a dendritic cell and this is a B cell. And these are going to be taking up, taken up into those cells and um, you know the dendritic cell is going to trigger, is going to present that antigen to a T cell over here. And that T cell is going to activate this B cell. This is of course an oversimplification that can be covered in other LOs. And then that B cell is going to release antibodies that are targeted for DNA, which is bad news as far as lupus goes. And um, the, the combination of this antigen, which is DNA in this case, and this antibody is known as an immune complex. And um, as far as why exactly this is all happening, because you might ask, well, why doesn't this happen to everybody? Why doesn't everybody have these antibodies that affect their DNA and their RNA? And um, the question is, well, or the answer to that, we've already covered a little bit in other LOs, but as far as specifically for lupus, uh, one thing that's happening is um, a breakdown of negative selection uh, during antibody uh, production and B cell and T cell development. So this is something that Adrian and, Ka and Casey both talked about. And um, so normally if you had, let's say, a B cell that was producing self-antigens, you would kill that B cell. And one of the things that would be used to kill that is one of the component systems, or complement system components, component 4, or C4. 
And one of the things that we see in people with lupus is that C4 is not working properly. And so that's going to uh, make it so negative selection isn't going to happen, and you'll be more likely to develop these antibodies um, for your DNA, which are going to kind of set off this whole chain of events that's going to lead to lupus. So one of the major cells of the innate immunity are dendritic cells. And something that dendritic cells, along with other cells of the um, innate immune system, have are these things called uh, toll-like receptors. So this is a toll-like receptor. Toll-like receptor. And toll-like receptors just generally recognize foreign things in the body. They're not as, as specific as antibodies, but they do a pretty good job of recognizing foreign material. And what happens in people with lupus is that for one reason or another, um, well, so what happens in people with lupus is these immune complexes that we talked about a minute ago, which are antibodies and DNA kind of bound together, um, are going to be recognized by these toll-like receptors. And um, in addition to that, there's these other things called um, nucleosomes. Which are a combination of histones and DNA. Um, so it's pretty much histones wrapped with DNA like this, like around them. And uh, those are also going to be recognized by the toll-like receptors. So it's these immune complexes and these nucleosomes which are going to bind, bind to the toll-like receptor and that in turn is going to release or um, signal the release of cytokines. Um, and those cytokines are going to cause inflammation and also the recruitment of other cells like um, macrophages, T cells, and other dendritic cells. Um, and kind of just so in case you want to know, some of those cytokines include tumor necrosis factor alpha, um, interleukin 10, and interleukin 17. Uh, one of the cytokines that Tanya mentioned specifically in her LO, um, she covered the same topic, is called BAAF, which is B cell activating factor. And what B cell activating factor is going to do is it's going to recruit more B cells. So you're going to get more antigens it's, and it's going to cause kind of a positive feedback loop, which is also what these cells are going to do. So that's basically um, what's happening with the innate immune system. And the key to all of this is the inflammation. So the inflammation is what's going to cause some of the permanent tissue damage that we see in, in systemic lupus, which is really the, the major clinical signs of the disease, which we'll talk about now. So the buildup of these immune complexes, these little guys, are what's triggering um, inflammation more or less. You also have the nucleosomes, but um, this is really the major component, is the buildup of these immune complexes of DNA and antibodies. And these are going to build up in different parts of the body, like in the lungs, in the brain, in the kidney, um, in the skin, the joints, which we saw in our patient. And you might ask yourself, you know, why is it that these are building up? Because everybody is going to produce antibodies, and those antibodies will bind to antigens and make immune complexes. But not everybody is going to have them accumulate in these different organs. And one of the reasons um, has to do, again, with the complement system. And there's um, one complement component called C1Q that's um, kind of responsible specifically for helping to clear out these um, immune complexes. And because those don't get cleared out and uh, for whatever, you know, maybe related to the C1Q or other mechanisms, you're going to get an overproduction of growth factors, um, oxidative agents, so you're going to get lots of oxidation going on, and that's going to cause overall fibrosis of these tissues and, um, you know, long-term damage. 
And in addition to autoantibodies against DNA, lupus is also associated with autoantibodies against a number of different things. So there's three of them um, that are particularly of note. So one thing that one type of thing that uh, the antibodies are going to bind to are red blood cells. Um, they'll also so these are red blood cells. They'll also bind to white blood cells, and finally to platelets. This seems kind of unrelated to everything that we've talked about so far, but it's it is kind of a an important part of lupus. It's because it is kind of just a general breakdown in the regulation of the immune system. So in a, in addition to these other auto antibodies, you're going to get you know a couple of others that as far as red blood cell auto antibodies that'll cause hemolytic anemia. Uh, white blood cell um, antibodies are going to cause leukocytopenia and platelet antibodies are going to cause thrombocytopenia and those each pretty much just mean that you have less of less platelets less white blood cells or less red blood cells so that pretty much wraps it up for the pathophysiology of lupus so lastly we're going to call, cover the pathogenesis of lupus. Um, there are basically three main factors. Uh, genetics, uh, being a female, and the environment, which is just sort of a catch-all term. So as far as genetics, um, lupus is a multigenic disease, which means it's involved, it involves a number of different, uh, a multiple, a, a multiple number of genes. It's, you can't really nail it down to one or two. It's kind of like diabetes or a lot of other major diseases where there's kind of a, a consortium of, of different mutations or different alleles for different genes that are going to cause the, the overall disease. Um, a couple of things that most of, them, most of these genes are involved with are the immune system, which is obvious, um, inflammation, and then finally, uh, tissue damage repair. And a couple ones that I'll just mention are uh, MHC mutations, um, specifically HLA-DQ, which is involved in a lot of autoimmune responses, and I'm out of space, but the other one is just complement mutations, which we already talked about. They, have, they play a pretty, pretty big role in lupus pathogenesis, so um, genetic mutations in complement plays a big role. As far as being a female, um, Hormones, specifically estrogen, seem to play a pretty big role in the development of lupus because women who are on birth control, so taking like estrogen supplements more or less, are more likely to develop lupus. And then the X chromosome has uh, certain genes on it that seem to play a role. It's not exactly clear why, um, but people who are, have Kleinfelters or XXY are more likely to develop lupus. And then just kind of related to... Um, to this is pregnancy can can present kind of a clinical challenge which is how uh, one source put it and it's I think it's fit for another LO if we wanted to do that um, as far as environmental factors go uh, UV light can play a pretty big role because it can induce apoptosis which is how you know those antibodies are going to have access to the DNA in the first place as we talked about uh, it also can alter DNA so that antibodies are more likely to bind the DNA. Certain drugs can make lupus more likely, which is related to methylation for a reason that I won't go into, but methylation would be a good future LO. Um, certain infections can cause lupus or can contribute to the development of lupus, including a virus called Epstein-Barr virus. Uh, which kind of produces proteins that mimics DNA uh, and it, the body will develop antibodies for that protein and those antibodies will also bind to the DNA. So that's how the kind of how the process works. And then last is smoking.